people like to eat, and they really mm. and uh, and restaurant it's an issue on its own. It becomes much more the restaurant. It's a congregational point where people know this is the place in the city I can anytime drop in and go eat something and talk to the devotees. And this talking sometimes becomes so powerful, so prominent in these restaurants that the eating is more or less like a secondary issue. <laughs> I know my friend Roman Chitaprabhu in Prague. He is standing selling in the <laughs> restaurant since 12 years. <laughs> the man has a congregation of his own. <laughs> they just come and lead people, oh, my work has left me, I just sit down, you know. And then you know, then he you know, talks to him like that. They come with all kinds of issues all the time. It's easy to preach like this, you know. Mm. Over the plate with prasada. <laughs> so one of the great thing, but it's a hard work. And you have to really give up a lot. Especially in the early stage of development of such a thing. You just there is no like I like this and I want this and and now I go to India and nothing. You are finished. Mm. You have to live and die with it. You have to have the consciousness I will die here. <laughs> yeah, book distribution is a little. Huh? Uh, it's book distribution is um, easy. You can just bring your 50 books with you, 100 books with you, and you can go on a vacation somewhere. And just every day you go out and just do books like that. If you like. This devotion is a little freedom. It's yeah. Luxury. Yeah. It's very absolute box screen. It's amazing. It's right. Yeah. right. And the books can be bought easy, even cheap. You don't have to cook anything. You don't have to maintain. You, you have store have to them. Out. You just yeah. store them like that. <laughs> the product is already coming. You know, it is. It is like a give it out. That's all. I'm amazed that not more devotees uh, jump on this and just you yeah. know, even as prehastas and maintain themselves. That's a powerful idea, but it takes also lots of another type of physical involvement as the restaurant. A restaurant is a very stereotype indoor activity. Book distribution is an outdoor activity. And that takes that yeah, takes exactly. a yeah, 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 yeah. It does take this is issues people don't want to address because you're supposed to be transcendental they are on this body. But Sanky Dan finished your also, it takes spiritual strength, and you have to have a maintain spiritual purity. Yeah, but well, you invade people's privacy. In a restaurant, people come to you. Mm. So you don't have that momentum where you have to just jam into him and stop him, control his mind, get over his false ego. You know, that's the real job. The rest of the book, and this, this is just by the way. Actually, the real job is to control your own mind. And, and that's why, you know, that would be the real. We revealed in a process what's happening to you. Mm. But my restaurant is more, yeah, it's more mechanical. Mm. But still, those devotees who take it like preaching, I understood restaurants with being a preaching, not just business. So those who take it like this, and they invest themselves, like on Sankirtan, into the process, mm. it will be felt by the people. Those restaurants are the most successful ones. Mm. People come to the restaurant to meet actually that person to meet the cook and to meet the same guy in the serving and because he invests himself into that, you know, he is doing it. It's like the restaurant I'm talking about, my friend to lunch it, it's a small restaurant, maintains four devotees. But they all have an absolute agreement when the when the collection in the restaurant the money goes down then they get less. Mm. Not like here's my salary. No no, here's my project. Mm. And you live with the project. If it's more successful then you get more money, if it's less successful, you get less money. Finished. And everybody is just on one page. Mm. Then, and that's the reason why it survived. Um, one of them, he's, he's working, and he's also, I see that he's taking, I mean, he's actually becoming very responsible for the restaurant. And he's only being paid, you know, he works there every day, five hours. And Jagad Vala pays him 2,000 crowns a month. Really? Well, he's like, you know, he... But he takes it. Family. He takes it as a, as a service. And training. And and now he's making you know these balls also. So he because he's in the restaurant, he makes the balls, and he can go out and support himself, you know, more and yeah, 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 yeah. and collect like that. And you become responsible, grown up man. Mm. Because he took that step down, it was too. 
And it was too tough for him to do books every day. He couldn't, I mean, for his mind, he couldn't do it. So now he, you know, he, he's really trying to find, you know, a platform where he can exist economically. And, um, it's a wonderful thing, yes, you know, if, if, you know, if you really understand the essence of the whole thing. Restaurant has the, not the, the luxury for, it's indoor, mostly. So you are not this kind of rather beaten figure out there on the street. That's maybe not understood by those who like to be rather beaten and who still have the, you know, the, the, the outdoor mentality. Yeah, that, that, would be my, that would be austerity for me, to the be Nordic, inside all the time. Nordic athletic, you know. Uh, <laughs> also for me. I understand why, why Hitler was fascinated with the Nordic race, you know, this, you know, this, you know, Norwegians, they like, they like this, uh, yeah, they I just heard a story, you know, from a Norwegian in the Second World War, from resistance, he was chased by a whole big group of Germans all on ski, you know, and he's still alive, he gave a personal report, you know, yes, and somehow other they didn't, they could shut him, but they, they, the, the mission was to capture him alive, to get the information that the rest of the resistance is. So nobody was shooting. And there was like 40 of them. And he, they dropped out one after another. And, you know, and he was like, it was his homeland, you know? It was in uh, Telemark, you know, and from the resistance. And he was getting faster and faster until only two guys remained. You know, it's probably some elite, you know, skiing guys from the German troop. And they were going through this telemark, you know, through this wilderness. And then one dropped out too. And then, you know, and then <laughs> and there was only two of them. And it was going like for 40 kilometers. And he found out, he reported, I found out this guy's good. And you know, but he's not so good uphill. Oh, yeah. You know, he is good downhill. And then to lose him, I always had to go uphill. So he was going always up, up, up in the mountains until they were high up there. And the other guy was still behind him. And, and then he was all the way up to the highest peak, you know. I mean, can you imagine how people can run on skis like that? And this is the homeland. And when he was on a peak, he realized, oh no, now I have to go all the way down. And he is better. So he turned around and shot him. <laughs> because the guy was still on the mission to capture him alive. So before he arrives, he's going to shoot me, pull the gun, and he just shot him. And he said, and then I was going down that way. <laughs> so, you know, this is Norwegian, you know, this is like, you know, and the Germans are dropping out right and left. So I was thinking, yeah, that's Sankirtan with such a mentality, it's, good. it's an asset. <laughs> it's snowing in your face. And it's <laughs> but, it's, it's, it's uh, a little opulence to be outside. It's, really it's a wonderful thing, as long as you can move that thing around. But there's momentum, believe me, you know, all the Nordic athletes will get old in and die too. But maybe much later, I don't know when, but well, maybe they will just die when they walk up the hill with the skis, I don't know what, but it's, it's really unusual. It's not a chance that here in the north you have this, I mean, you go to Oslo, have all these monuments, you know, these naked guys, Muscle work, you know. Yeah, he was like, he was actually, uh, he, he was a, uh, what is it, Nazi? Sympathy, uh, sympathy, sympathy, sculpture. I think we have to stop here. We have to stop to see if I end up now in the Nordic Nazi. That's the time to start.